Yes, let me start with the causes. So, uh, between June of 2014 and December, the Brent price of crude oil dropped by about $49. And many observers looked at this and said, well, it must be that there were some oil price shocks happening in the second half of 2014 in order to get that kind of sharp decline. It turns out, however, that there are two components to this oil price decline. One was predictable. And this predictable component was a little bit more than half of the observed decline. And it had to do with a predictable decline in global real economic activity, essentially the business cycle slowing down in the world, accounting for about 10% of the overall decline. And the rest uh, had to do with a series of supply shocks, that is both shocks to actual production of crude oil and shocks to expected production of crude oil, taking place prior to the middle of the year. Uh, in addition, there were two more actual oil price shocks, one in July and the other in December. In July, what happened is that oil price expectations shifted and essentially the demand for storage or inventories of crude oil dropped. And in December, the global economy unexpectedly weakening. The first shock accounted for an additional $9 decline, the second shock for $13. Now, you asked about the causes, uh, then you asked about the consequences. Now, the consequences depend on which country you're looking at. Obviously, if you're talking about countries that depend heavily on oil export revenues, let's say Iraq or Iran or Venezuela or Russia for that matter, those countries unambiguously will have a hard time as a result of this oil price decline. When you look at countries like Canada or the US that recently have increased their oil production, the situation is more complicated because on the one hand, if you think of the United States, the profitability of the oil sector has declined a lot, so a lot of people get laid off because there are no more jobs for them. At the same time, for ordinary people not living in those areas, this is a good thing because they pay less for uh, gasoline than they used to, and so on balance, at least for the United States, this is still a good thing. Now, when you're talking about European economies, it gets more complicated uh, because uh, of course, on the one hand, you might think clearly that must be a stimulus. On the other hand, there are reasons why the stimulus is not as big as you might have thought. And one is that, of course, one of the reasons the oil price declined in the first place was the weak European economy. And so in thinking about how the oil price affects the European economy, we have to take that part out because otherwise we have a chicken and egg problem. Now, um, the second concern is that as the dollar price of crude oil declined, the exchange rate also moved and in fact it became more expensive. Uh, in terms of euros for Europeans to buy crude oil and so for them the oil price decline is not quite as dramatic as it would be for example for Americans. In addition, because gasoline taxes are much higher in Europe than in, in the United States, for the same oil price decline you will see a much smaller decline in prices at the pump and so again that will dampen the effects on the European economy. But the biggest concern is that the effect of an oil price shock is always bounded by how much oil an economy uses. In the case of the US economy, we have the necessary data to give you a pretty good idea of what that means. If you're thinking of the additional discretionary income that people will have in their pocket because they don't have to spend that money at the gas station after the price of oil has gone down, the total effect on real GDP would be about a, uh, an increase of 0.5%. Now that is for the total 44% decline that happened in the second half of 2014. Now you might say an additional 0.5% that's pretty big compared to growth rates that you might see, but it's a one-time adjustment. And so relative to uh, the state of the economy in Europe, uh, that's going to be a welcome relief, but it's not going to be a game changer and certainly projections of much higher growth rates for the future as a result of lower oil prices are not uh, backed up uh, by uh, the data and, and by economics. So um, there are other effects you might think of. For example, people have talked about the possibility that lower oil prices might lead to a revival of uh, the oil industry or for that matter of, sorry not of the oil industry, of, of industries that use oil or oil products as an input. And uh, this argument is not likely to be true in the United States for one uh, reason. Uh, one, uh, one, one concern in the US is that actually the product prices have not gone down nearly as much as the oil price has. And that has to do with the internal structure of the oil market and the refining market. And so really, from the point of view of someone buying products, nothing has changed. 
But more generally, also in Europe, the concern is that the share of these industries in, in the economy is just too small to make much of a difference. And so, on, on balance, that is not going to change the picture. On top of that, if you were a, a company that's using a lot of oil product, products, you would not want to invest right now because there's just too much uncertainty about what the price of oil is going to do in the future. And so, uh, you've got to wait and see, essentially, and so there's not going to be any change. And likewise, a number of other channels you might have thought of don't amount to much, and that shouldn't have been a surprise because this is not the first time that the oil price has gone down. We had sustained declines in the oil price, for example, after the Asian crisis. Remember that the price of oil at some point went down to 10 or 11 dollars, much lower than, than right now. And uh, essentially, nothing happened, right? It was not that we had a big structural transformation of the economy, and uh, so it would be unreasonable to expect a very different outcome this time.